listening to news, views and interviews on Radio Cardiff. Good afternoon. Ooh. Let me twiddle about there a second. Good afternoon. You're listening to news, views, and interviews on Radio Cardiff 98.7 FM. I'm Jane Morris. Now, charity Pancreatic Cancer UK is calling for appalling pancreatic cancer survival rates to be addressed as a global issue as the first ever World Pancreatic Cancer Day is launched today. The current five-year survival rate for pancreatic cancer patients is just 5%, the lowest of 21 of the most common cancers. The next lowest, lung cancer, is significantly higher at 12%, while breast cancer's rate is 86%, 85% for prostate cancer, and 68% for cervical cancer. Pancreatic Cancer UK says that research funding, the fact that there is no screening program for pancreatic cancer, as well as the late diagnosis of thousands of patients each year, needs to be urgently addressed, not just in the UK, but across the globe. Now, around 8,800 8,800 people are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer every year in the UK, making it the 10th most common cancer. However, it is the 5th most common cause of cancer death. Now, by 2030, pancreatic cancer is predicted to replace breast cancer as the 4th biggest cancer killer in the UK. And Pancreatic Cancer UK has the ambitious goal of doubling five-year survival rates as well as changing the NHS experience of pancreatic cancer patients from being one of the worst to one of the best. Now, I know that was a bit of a long introduction, but I'm joined on the line now by Linda Reardon, who sadly lost her mother and cousin to pancreatic cancer. Hello, Linda. Hi, Jane. I'm hoping you can hear me okay because it's a very faint line. Oh, right. Um, Let me try and turn myself up a little bit. Can you hear me better now? Just about. I I can manage. Okay. Well, we're hearing you loud and clear anyway here, so uh, hopefully that's okay. So, do you want to tell us what happened with your your mother and your cousin? You're fading away again. Sorry. Um, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear. We can hear you perfectly clearly. Sorry, we. I'm not sure why we can't. You can't hear us very well. Would you like to tell us what happens with your your mother and your cousin? Yeah, certainly. Um, my mum has been suffering for quite a while for a few years before she was actually diagnosed. She had ba- various diagnoses from the doctor in the hospital. They diagnosed her with IBS, psoriasis, even women's problems at one point, and the pain was getting worse. Now, we'd already lost her cousin back in 2004 to pancreatic cancer. He was still working. He was being treated for indigestion. And the day he was given a diagnosis, he passed away 12 days later. Wow. With mum, it was the, around the time of the swine flu epidemic. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, when she phoned the doctor, when she was getting worse over the Christmas in 2009, they said it was it possibly swine flu and not to come to surgery. By the middle of January, she got so much more worse and she was joined by then as well, that we managed to get her with a bit of nagging from me and my sister to go back to the GP. They admitted her to hospital straight away and they carried out tests for the next few days. Seven days after she was admitted, she was told it was stage four pancreatic cancer. It was inoperable. All they could do was offer palliative care and try and get her pain under control. That took approximately three weeks. She came home and she passed away on the 11th of March, that same year, 2010. Gosh. So, uh, I don't know where to begin with that. Where do you think, do you think your mother or your cousin could have been diagnosed earlier? I do. I I think a lot of it is trying to change the attitudes of people. A lot of people assume that pancreatic cancer is an healthy person's disease. Now, I help run two support groups online for people with pancreatic cancer, and it affects all ages. The youngest child, the youngest person I've been supporting recently was two, actually. It was a four-year-old child at the beginning of the year and a six-year-old child about two months ago. And thankfully, both of those are surviving because they were diagnosed early enough. They do need to, once they, appear, once they see the GP, 
If they've seen them more than three times the same symptoms and any medication they're giving them is not working, then they need to be referring them to a specialist for MRI scans and CT scans. That is the only way they're going to be able to detect this. Mm -hmm. And why isn't that happening at the moment? Sorry, I think I've lost you altogether now. Sorry, why isn't that happening at the moment? Sorry? Uh, Why isn't that happening at the moment? I'm really not sure. I think it's because people don't realise how prevalent this is. It's, it seems to be on the increase. I know in, in Wales alone, in 2012, there was 487 cases diagnosed. Of those 487, 440 died the same year. So there's, there's got to be a better understanding. There's got to be more awareness out there. So I don't know. I mean, in my family's case, my mum was going back and forth to the GP with with these symptoms. But they were still assuming. They were still convinced it was a digestive problem rather than screening it and finding out mm-hmm. that it was in the pancreas. Yeah, yeah. And I think that seems to be the case for the people in the support group I run as well. Most of them say the same thing. They're back and forth to the GP with these symptoms. And it's only when they actually have looked online and then they've gone back to the GP and said, could it be this, that they refer them for screening. It shouldn't really be that way around, should really has it no it's over 40 years mm. it's been the same it's, it's marginally improved it's probably gone up from about three percent to 3.4 percent and that's just not good enough no no not when you're losing people within days of them being diagnosed and i mean within within 12 months of them being diagnosed there's over 80 percent of them have already passed away so there's got to be something that can improve it there, there is um the whipples procedure where they can remove the pancreas but they need to diagnose much earlier be able to do that once it's got to stage four it's impossible to do that Mm -hmm. is pancreatic i know you're not a doctor but is pancreatic cancer a fast-acting cancer it does appear to be but again i think it's because the symptoms can be confused with other things at the earlier stages Mm -hmm. and are overlooked but by the time that the gp is starting to suspect there might be something more wrong it's already spread to other organs Right, okay. So what are the symptoms? The main symptoms is pain under the rib cage on the right side, going down to the back, mm-hmm. um, loose smelly stools, mm-hmm. sudden weight loss, vomiting and diarrhea, and then at later stages, jaundice. Okay, okay. That's what I mean, they're quite non-specific. <laughs> no, but I guess you, we expect when we go to the GP that when we come to them with symptoms, yes, they're going to look for the simple things first, but if we're going to keep coming back, sure, we expect them to exactly. be looking at all the possibilities, don't we? Exactly. This is why I think this is why we're pushing that it should be a three-strike rule. If, if they're coming in three times with the same symptoms, then they need to be looked at by a specialist. Mm, no, absolutely. Is there a genetic link to the cancer as well? Again, that's been investigated because I know when we found out about my um, cousin, mm-hmm. I wondered if it was a family link. And at the time I asked my GP about that, and they said, no, it was just one of those things. It was a very rare cancer, that he'd never had a case in his surgery, and he doubted if any of his colleagues had either. Mm-hmm. Um, a few years later, my uncle, who'd had lymph node cancer, he'd been in remission for a few years, he developed the symptoms, and the secondary cancer came back in the pancreas, pancreas with him. So, I, again, I mentioned it to my GP, and again, they, they turned me away and said, no, no, it doesn't run in families. And then when my mum was diagnosed and passed away, I turned to Macmillan at the time, to the forum on there, and I was talking to other people on there. And then a group of us got together and set up families in support of pancreatic cancer awareness. And we found that we were all hearing the same stories. And there are many, many people in that support group who've lost um, mothers, cousins, grandparents, all down the same family line. So there must be some sort of link there. Mm-hmm. Because and that, that would need more investigation. But again, it's down to funding as well. Grandparents, all down the same family line. So there, there must be some sort of link there. Mm-hmm. Because and that, that would need more investigation. But again, it's down to funding as well. They need more funding mm-hmm. to be able to... 
carry out the research on that. There are some really good research programs out there, but without the many, they can't develop what they've found. No, because there hasn't been the amount of money, like you said, or the amount of research into it that there has been for some other cancers. No, that's right. That's right. It's less than one percent of the overall funding actually goes into pancreatic cancer research. Mm. And again, that needs to change. We did have um, a successful debate in Parliament back in September, which doesn't help Wales. Mm -hmm. But it was recognised there that this does need to be investigated and changed. With Wales, we had uh, a reception to tell them about Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month at the Welsh Assembly on the 6th of November. And we're hoping from that that we will go forward with that and get a debate eventually there. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's a very slow process. Yeah. Um, One of the things you are doing, though, is asking people to sign a petition. We've already done that. That was to get the debate in Parliament. Ah, oh, right. Now we're going to okay. have to achieve the same for Wales. We will be taking that. But it will be step by step, and they do. People do need to sort of keep an eye on their, their newspapers because we do. I, I'm known as a stalker, so whenever I've got information, I start nagging all the channels to try and get the information out there. But it is. We, we had the petition because, um, as I say, it was four, year, four and a half years ago since we last met, and at the time there was very little awareness out there. But bit by bit, because there's about 1,040 of us in this support group now, and we do, as soon as we know from Pancreatic Cancer UK and Pancreatic Cancer Action that something needs to be done, then we start driving it forward and writing to our MPs, and in our case in Wales, to our assembly members, our local councillors, pushing everybody that we can think of to bring this matter up. And the, it's with us, it's the Welsh Assembly. We need to push the Welsh Assembly for this. Yeah, absolutely. So where can our listeners go for more information? They need to go to Pancreatic Cancer UK. They can pick them up on the website. Yeah. I'm just going to get the website address to you now because I know it off by heart. It's pancreaticcancer.org.uk. Okay. Brilliant. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I haven't had a chance to do it yet, but I will put the links to that on our Facebook page, which is Radio Cardiff News Views and Interviews, and we'll, we'll tweet it as well on our Twitter, okay? Fantastic. Can I ask, while well, I've got you on phone, and be really cheeky, if any of the listeners can get to Caffilly Castle tonight, about 6.30, Caffilly Castle is actually lighting up purple for World Pancreatic Cancer Day. Wow. And also, if you and your staff can all get together and do a nice purple pea selfie and upload it onto Twitter under hashtag purple pea selfie, I'd be very happy with that as well. Okay, what was that again? Purple? Purple pea selfie. So it's purple in lowercase, then a capital P, and then selfie, S-E-L-F-I-E. Right, okay then. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll put that out on the social media this afternoon as well. We'll see who we can get to do that, okay? Fantastic. Thank you very much, Jane. No problem at all. Take care, Linda. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.